Live from Case at 12, the night beat starts right now. So you've pretty much lost that portion of your lungs. So your lung capacity is never going to be the same again. One doctor giving us an inside look into a COVID survivor's lungs tonight. The man who survived COVID also telling us what he's now experiencing six months after his diagnosis. But first. Complete devastation and heartbreak. A young mother's life now gone just as she was heading to work. Police say Monique Rodriguez was hit and killed by a driver who was suspected of driving drunk yesterday morning. Tonight, Rodriguez's family trying to figure out how to move forward. The 19th's Jonathan Cotto spoke with family members as they gathered to honor her memory on the city's west side. Jonathan. That's right, just moments ago, friends and family gathered at this bus stop off of Culebra Navidad to honor Monique Rodriguez's memory, whose life was cut short at this very location. Family and friends taking a moment to grieve the loss of Monique Francine Rodriguez. She was a granddaughter and a daughter, but most significantly a mom. Monique was a, a free spirit, very loving, very kind, very patient, a wonderful mommy to her four-year-old little girl. The 29-year-old mother was excited to plan her daughter's fourth birthday that is just weeks away. She died Thursday just before 7 a.m. while waiting for the bus near Culebra Navidad to get to work. She was just starting a new job at a dentist office and waiting for the bus, totally unaware of what would happen, had no idea where that car came from. Now, family tell us the suspected drunk driver was traveling eastbound when over the median traveling into westbound traffic, essentially making its way over to this bus stop where Monique was fatally struck. The car continuing onto private property, crashing against that fence. Now, local businesses tell us this is not the first tragedy that takes place at this stop and on Culebra Road. 18-year-old Melanie Mariah Gaitón is suspected of being drunk behind the wheel. Police say Gaitón was traveling at a high speed. We know that the gravity of the situation and her death will put them away. So it doesn't happen to someone else become victims of reckless driving, drunk driving at 7 in the morning. Oh my God. Police say Gaitón is charged with intoxicated manslider and failure to stop and render aid resulting in death. Now, Rodriguez's mother was present at tonight's vigil, but too distraught to appear on camera. She says she is leaning on her faith to find forgiveness. Reporting live, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. Developing tonight, a trail becomes the site of the discovery of apparent human remains. Someone making that discovery several feet off the Jack White Park trailhead located off I-35 just before 1 o'clock this afternoon. Police say that area is near a high water crossing area on the Salado Creek. The Bear County Medical Examiner now conducting an investigation on those remains and the person's death. It's unclear how long that body may have been out there. Also tonight, two men believed to be armed and dangerous and on the run. Police releasing these pictures of the two suspects wanted in connection with armed robberies at pharmacies in Seguin. 38-year-old Andre Dupree Jack and 37-year-old Alesco Factor are also accused of similar robberies in Sealy and Pleasanton. This is a story we've been following now for months, and the cases involve victims being tied up with zip ties. Anyone with information on these suspects asked to call the Guadalupe County Crime Stoppers number. That number, 1-877-403-TIPS. Our coverage continues on those catalytic converter thefts and the bill meant to crack down on the problem. Thieves target the car parts for the precious metals inside and sell the stolen parts to recycling facilities. Well, the Recycling Council of Texas, which represents metal recycling companies in the state, says the passage of House Bill 4110 will do little to slow down the problem. The president of the council says the bill does not stop criminals from trying to ship the parts out of state for sale. He also says criminals could also sell the parts online. The council suggested restricting sales to metal recycling facilities or placing the same restrictions across all facilities that handle the car parts. Those suggestions did not make it into the measure. We didn't want to speak against the bill, 
because um, you know we didn't want to we didn't we wanted to try to solve the problem and help with the problem and but unfortunately the way the bill um, got passed I don't think it's um, it's um, going to help with much. Okay. Governor Greg Abbott has over a week to sign the bill or veto it. If the bill becomes law, recycling companies will have to document in detail where the catalytic converter came from, including the vehicle title. Now, those selling would only be able to get $25 cash. I want to get you out to some late breaking news right now. Tonight, several firefighters responding to a call for a structure fire over on the city's west side. This is all happening on Del Valle Alley, Alley and Chupadera Street. You can see several fire uh, apparatus there on the scene surrounding it. At one point on our scanners, we heard that there might have been two homes on fire. It appears that they have knocked those flames down at this time, but a very large police and fire presence in that area this evening. We'll keep an eye on this. And if any new information comes in, we'll certainly pass it on. Meanwhile, questions remain about the significant editing done to two videos of shootings released under the San Antonio Police Department's body camera policy. SAPD officials today refused to make Chief William McManus available for an interview with KSAT. The portions of video included narration and were from outside a San Antonio International Airport terminal and from the fatal shooting of two people during a traffic stop on Pin Road back in April. A second version of the Pin Road footage without narration was shared with media from a private YouTube link, which department officials asked not be shared publicly because it lacked context. A variant of the coronavirus increasing. It was first spotted in India and making up 90% of cases in the UK. Here in the US, the Delta variant is in at least 29 states and makes up about 6% of cases, doubling from last week. Researchers showing the Pfizer vaccine is 88% effective against the variant after a second dose. The push to get more people vaccinated continues. The Pfizer vaccine and the Johnson & Johnson vaccine will be available tomorrow. A pop-up clinic will be open from 10 in the morning to 1 Saturday afternoon. It's happening at the Restore Adult Education Center on San Pedro Avenue. We have this location and next week's schedule online at KSAT.com. Well, COVID concerns continue for the so-called long haulers. Difficulty breathing, doing everyday things, and that annoying chronic cough that just won't go away. Well, that's what lung specialists are seeing in many COVID-19 survivors. They say anyone who was hospitalized or had mild symptoms should see a specialist. I really have to be conscientious about really slowing down a little more, you know, not walking so fast or, you know, taking a break once in a while because I get short of breath. Six months since he got COVID-19, Santos Barrio says he's not back at 100%. The 52-year-old has been getting treatment with Dr. Monica Izaguzu, who's seeing a lot of pulmonary problems in patients who had COVID-19. There's a lot of residual scar tissue that's being left in these patients' lungs, and that's what that post-COVID interstitial lung disease is. Here she shows us what a normal lung looks like on a CAT scan. The black and white image is pretty clear. And then one with COVID-19 scar tissue damage. See the difference? This white stuff, that's the COVID pneumonia. That's permanent damage to the lung, she says patients will have to deal with. Some may need supplemental oxygen for life. You'll never have that lung capacity again in some patients because that scar tissue is tugging and pulling at their airways. They're just left with this chronic cough. Barry has got treatment right away and his lungs show improvement. Better, but you still see there's more haziness than there should be. A week ago, he finally returned to work. Week by week, I can tell I'm making a little bit of progress. Dr. Izagusu says they're seeing patients in their 20s with problems, even some who had mild cases. I have a whole set of patients that tell me they were so physically fit and active and they're not able to run, they're not able to do their regular workouts. Dr. Izaguzu says anyone who had COVID-19 should see a specialist for an evaluation. There's treatments that can help improve your lung health. She says more research is needed to determine whether lung function will improve or worsen in the future for COVID survivors. 
Money taken from the military to build a wall along the U.S. southern border is being returned. Today, the White House Office of Management and Budget said it was giving more than $2 billion back to the Pentagon. That money will be used for military projects like on-base schools, housing, and facilities. President Joe Biden paused the border project back in January and called for a review of all of its funds. Since then, the White House has also canceled contracts connected to the wall construction. Next week, Governor Greg Abbott is set to announce his plans to build a border wall in Texas. It's unclear right now how much his plan would cost and how it would be executed. Right now, feeling June like we have readings in the 70s to low 80s We're 77 burning right now, 79 New Braunfels and 84 Stinson, 83 officially at the airport in town Hondo now at 82 degrees. Tomorrow we'll wake up to mid 70s for most of us. Some low clouds just early around sunrise, then they'll break and give us a lot of sunshine. Overall, the weekend is going to be very good pool weather, find a splash pad or even go to the beach. And by the way, if you're going to the bay, maybe doing some fishing, a slight chop on Saturday, southeasterly breeze at 10 to 15 Sunday not much of a breeze at all. Smoother water temperatures both days topping out in the mid 80s. No chance of rain and sunny. We'll talk more about the weekend here and of course our next chance of rain coming up. Thanks Adam. Still ahead on the night beat. It's a musical that's made its way to the silver screen. Why one group made the decision to hold a private screening for In the Heights here in San Antonio. Coming up. And summer travel is ramping up. What airlines are preparing for and the warning from TSA coming up next on the night beat. We want to take you back to some breaking news tonight. We brought you at the top of the newscast. Our crew finally arriving there at the scene on the west side. This is on Del Valle Alley and Chupadera Street. Several people outside of the home right now, along with firefighters. You can see them there. You can see uh, crews. It looks like, from my experience, Tim, you know, when there's an active fire, they're inside fighting it, but it looks like um, they have things under control there. We have a, a photographer there on the scene, and hopefully she'll give us more updates as to um, if there was any uh, damage to the homes or not. But we know that there are people uh, that are standing outside there. Just from having covered some of the stories um, there in that area, I know that homes are really close together mm -hmm. there. So, that's and, and we are hearing from our photographer on the scene that uh, it does appear that there were two homes that were on fire tonight. So we'll probably have to wait a little bit later before we figure out uh, just how much damage was there and if anybody was injured. We'll keep an eye on that for you the rest of the night. Meanwhile, more than 64% of U.S. adults have received at least one dose of the COVID-19 vaccine and more than 53% are now fully vaccinated. With more vaccinations happening, more people are deciding to travel this summer. But as travel increases, so do new concerns. Meredith Wood reports. You masked up, you got vaxxed up, and now it's time for you to get up, get out of the house, this summer, cities across the U.S. reopen as more Americans are feeling comfortable hitting the road. National parks are seeing record numbers of visitors. In anticipation of the increased travel, United Airlines says it expects to bring back most of its workforce by the fall. And the TSA is warning they do not have the staffing to deal with the summer surge, even asking some of its office workers to help at checkpoints. But it's not all smooth sailing. We have to shut down our entire economy if we have a surge. The governor of the U.S. Virgin Islands, a popular cruising destination, is concerned what the return of ships will mean for his people. To have travelers that we're not assured of that have been vaccinated or at least PCR tested is traumatic. And when you talk about places like uh, these small islands, they have one hospital. Two passengers aboard Celebrity Millennium's first post-pandemic voyage testing positive for coronavirus, despite the company requiring everyone on board to be vaccinated. We hear that these people are asymptomatic, and it's going to be important over time to see are there other people who subsequently became infected as a result of those uh, th these two people who are in isolation now. I'm Meredith Wood reporting. Well, some may decide to have a staycation, and there is still plenty to do, including checking out new movies. In the Heights was first delayed because of the pandemic and is now being released. It's filled with music and dances and tells a story of a tight-knit community in a small Latin neighborhood in New York. Today, people gathered for an exclusive screening of the musical that is brought to the silver screen. The goal was to highlight Latino-centric projects, and some guests we spoke with uh, today uh, 
uh, talked about the importance of representation from their communities. The event put together by several organizations, including San Antonio Firm Communications, who says timing is everything. It's the most critical time frame this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. It's opening weekend box office numbers that have everything to do with the success of a film. So if we want to see more films like this, like our stories told, our culture, our music, we need to make sure that we go out and support the openings. And the musical comes from the same person who brought you Hamilton, Lin-Manuel Miranda. Looks like a high energy, lots of singing and dancing, very colorful movie. I'm sure it'll do well this weekend at the box office. And that might be where you want to hide out this weekend, Adam <laughs> Kasky, because it has gotten warm on us real quick. Yeah, it has. You know, May was below average. We started June even below average. We're starting to make up for some lost time here, temperature wise. And yeah, if you don't want to be in the AC this weekend, then just find a pool, a splash pad or go to the beach. It's going to be good weather at the beach as well. A little breezy Saturday, but Sunday, not much wind at all at the beach. 90 degrees. That was our high today. Every day this work week, we had a high temperature of 90 degrees. That was our lucky number this week. Del Rio topped out at 102 this afternoon. Catula Pleasanton at 94 and even New Braunfels 92 the high. Let's take a look at where we are now. 83 degrees. Dew point is 70. So a bit muggy out there. We definitely have the humidity in place, but it's not as oppressive as what it was earlier this week. We're starting to see a little tick downward in the afternoon dew points, but it's still humid out there and it's here to stay for the most part. Del Rio still at 92. We're meanwhile 79 in Beeville. 81 Gonzales, 79 in Uvalde and Kerrville. Let's take a look at the big picture here across the state. Very quiet. We had a few showers pop up in West Texas. That's good. It's where we need the rain the most across the state. That's a, one of the few parts of Texas that's actually in drought still. All the actions far to the north and even east of us, particularly along the east coast of the mid-Atlantic and eastern seaboard. We still have the big blue H that's affecting our weather. That will be pushing northward in the days ahead. But we're also keeping an eye on this thunderstorm and moisture that we, some thunderstorm activity and deep moisture we have over the southern Gulf of Mexico. As that high pushes northward, there's a chance that some of this moisture could open up and flow closer to Texas. But right now, indications are that moisture and the disturbances with it would head east of us. Nonetheless, we are expecting a pattern shift into next week. Monday will be our first chance of a few showers, only a 20% chance, and that's going to be the case daily Monday through Thursday next week, especially in the afternoon. Some of those rogue pop up showers possible and maybe even the remnants of a thunderstorm complex from the north of us. So tomorrow, 76 in the morning, some gray clouds early, then bright sunshine most of the day, making it to 93, the high temperature, south southeasterly wind at only 5 to 10. A bit of a breeze tomorrow, not much of a wind on Sunday. Here's a look at your temperatures out west along the Rio Grande, right around 100 degrees again. Del Rio probably 102, Carrizo Springs 101. You get to Beeville about 95, Corpus Christi at 90. Leon Springs 92, Timberwood Park as well, and Elmendorf 95, the high tomorrow. We get into Sunday, most of us in the mid 90s, so we'll crank it up just a couple of degrees. Again, not even much of a breeze on Sunday. Then next week, no big changes in temperatures. Keep in mind, low 90s is average, but some daily slight rain chances. I have nothing kind to say about summer. <laughs> Can't hide from it any longer. All right, the Smithson Valley Rangers boys baseball team trying to keep their state championship hopes alive. Yeah, and this is the first time they've been to the state high school baseball tournament since 2005. I wish I had great news to report, but it will take a big rally to advance to the state title game. When we come back, highlights from Round Rock. Also, what is this Cowboys chess challenge all about? And the Rangers have got their fans out there, plus NBA playoffs as well coming up. The Smithson Valley Rangers baseball team in the Class 6A state semifinals taking on the Heath Hawks out of Rockwall. Winner advances to the state championship game tomorrow. Second inning, Rangers down one inning, a little bit of a trouble with the bases loaded with the Hawks and only one out. Jet Williams has a chopper to shortstop. Ryan Ruff as the Rangers try to turn the double play, but they get one out, and but not first. And it's 2 nothing Hawks. Next inning is 4 nothing now. The Hawks' Alex Stowers pops up to shallow left. Three Rangers converge to make the play. They cannot. Another run from Rockwall, and it's 5 nothing. Rangers start to fight back. Bottom of the third. Bases loaded for Cason Wells. This is when deep to center field. The sack fly will bring home Christian Keller. The Rangers will cut that lead down to three going into the fourth, but now in the sixth inning, having yet to go to the seventh, Rockwall Heath right now is leading Smithson Valley 8-2. to two. That's in the sixth after the game started. There we go right there. After the game started late, it was supposed to start at 7 o'clock, delayed until 8.
Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Besides the return of Dak Prescott to full workouts, the other standout to the Cowboys minicamp has been Micah Parsons. The Cowboys' top draft pick stood out on the seven-on-seven drills, but not as a linebacker, as a DPR. That's the Cowboys' terminology as a designated pass rusher, using the linebacker out of Penn State more of a defensive end. And a sign of what's to come for the Dallas D this season under new coordinator Dan Quinn. What does he think of his added role as a DPR? Just creating havoc, uh, creating disruption, uh, being able to get, create that excitement, momentum change, a chance to get the ball out and get it back to our explosive offense. So that's kind of what I like about pass rushing. And here's something you may not have known. Micah is a chess player, avid chess player. And in fact, he had to break off a match with teammate Amari Cooper just to do this interview. It's been really hectic. He he does have a lead right now, so I won't lie to the media and say that, you know, I beat him or anything. He does have a nice lead, but he won't play me on chess.com. He will only play me in person. But Parsons says he welcomes any and all challengers at chess.com. His username, by the way, is Sticks. It's spelled S-T-I-X, City 11. And Eddie Brown is about to start his sixth season with the Dallas Cowboys. And no certainties about starting this coming season. That's after starting eight of the ten games he played in last season. That's because the Cowboys used the draft to select three defensive backs, including Kelvin Joseph with their second pick, 44th overall, and one on the third picks, 99th overall, for Nashawn Wright. How does Anthony look at the competition he's facing going forward? It's always competition. You know, it's the NFL. You know, it's always going to be competition somewhere. And, you know, we lost, we lost Cheeto last year. So, of course, we got to replace, we got to replace somebody and somebody got to come in. So, it's always going to be competition. You just got to do your part and don't need to worry about that. And just, like I said, make everybody better around you. Because at the end of the day, if, if we win, everybody win. One of the positions that new general manager Nick Casario beat up for the Houston Texans is a running back. He kept David Johnson, went on to sign free agents Mark Ingram, Rex Burkhead, and also Philip Lindsay, who says he is a student of Taekwondo, taught by his father, who actually ran a class. And Philip was asked how Taekwondo has helped in his NFL career. Balance, you know, power, everything comes from the core anyway. And, it, and it's being able to, to have control of your body as well and just to... to you know, have that control, but the power at the same time. And also with the meditation and everything like that, it relaxes your mind and puts you in a different place where you can focus more and just just kind of block out everything else. And, you know, in this in this game, you got to be able to have focus. What is it like to be San Antonio's world champion Mario Barrios? Find out next. After stealing game one in Philadelphia, the Atlanta Hawks are hoping to protect home court, take back the series lead in game three tonight. The Sixers had a five-point lead at halftime, then blew the Hawks out of the building in the third quarter. Joel Embiid scores 15 of his 27 points in the night in the third, helping turn that five-point lead into a 20-point lead going into the fourth. Sixers take home court advantage 127-111. to Novak Jokovic here stopped Rafael Nadal's bid for the 14th French Open title, handing him only his third loss in 108 matches at the tournament by coming back to win a thriller of a semifinal. The match lasted four hours, 11 minutes. In fact, it was getting close to the nationwide COVID curfew, but French authorities let the crowd stay for the finish of this match after trailing 0-2 in the fourth set. Djokovic here rattle off six consecutive games to avenge his loss to Nadal in last year's final 3-6-6-3-7-6-6-2. The first time I've done the Showtime on Lexus, but um, you know, now everyone, you know, back home, they get to see an insight of what I get to deal with, you know, every um every camp. Now, you know you're making it big in boxing when camera crews follow you for almost a week. Showtime started a two-part series tonight, previewing the Mario Barrios and Gervonta Davis title fight in two weeks. We'll have more from the first episode of All Access Sunday on Instant Replay, plus more from Mario Barrios as he trains in California Bay Area. If you want to watch the pay-per-view event, it's going to be $69.99 for the fight of the summer for San Antonio boxing fans. So good luck to Mario, and we'll be watching. It should be fun to see. Yeah. Thank you, Greg. We'll be right back.